Sorry? Apa you jawab tu? Saya tak dengar. Can you repeat article 1 T? Akmal? Akmal? Apa resource yang diperlukan? Human. Human? Human apa? Human you sebut. Human apa? If you answer human, it's not really right. Betul. Human. Human apa? Pekerja. <laughs> We simply say it as man power or human capital. Human is just human. It doesn't represent the resources of the firm. You need to be more specific, Akmal. So maybe we referring to the main power. You need main power to run the business. Okay. So basically, you must remember the concept of 5M. Kalau kita cakap pasal resources or when we want to run any kind of business operations. So business resources, we refer to 5M. I think I believe kita dah discuss sebelum ni 5M. Remember tak? Kita pernah discuss tak sebelum ni 5M tu apa? Guys. Saya tak ingatlah kelas ni ke kelas lain tapi... Uh, when we discuss about this, please remember the concept of 5M. Apa dia sebenarnya? Apa 5M yang diperlukan tu sebenarnya? As the main resources. As key resources. Money, Doktor. Lagi? Yeah, we can talk. Materials. Material, manpower. Okay, lagi method and machine. Okay, tak apa. Okay, so at least you you get this kind of ideas. So to get profit without risk, experience without danger, okay, and reward without work, it is impossible as it is to live without opportunity to being born. So that means, uh, having said that, dalam kita normally in our life, we cannot run away from this kind of risk. We cannot actually run away from uh, work, for example. So that means uh, there should be some kind of Uh, what we call it um, uh, challenges that we need to face lah. So how can entrepreneurs efficiently acquire and organize the resources needed to launch their venture? So when we talk about efficiently, efficient, what what do you what what do you understand by the term of efficient? When we talk about uh, to get efficient resources, what does it mean? Faris Marijan. Faris. Paris. Yes, doctor. Uh, did you understand my question just now? Uh, efficient. Is it efficiently? Yeah, we focus on efficient. What does it mean? Uh, I think how to get the most out of the list. Sorry, you? Sorry, can you repeat, Faris? You get the most out of the list. Okay. Example? Very good. It, it's a very I don't good. Know how to, I don't know how to make it as an example, but yeah, I think it was. I think it's like that. Yeah, what you actually been said is true. Anyone would, would be able to give example from Faris quote just now. You get the most from the less. It's very interesting. Lit ping. What do you understand? You get the most from the less. What does it mean? Lim, Lit Ping, are you there? Ah, uh, yes. So, what do you understand by that, Lim, Lit Ping? Mm. You get uh, the most I less. think mm -hmm. the meaning is you can produce a uh, maximum with minimum resources. Yes, that's very true. Okay, so basically you can produce many outputs with less input. So input referring to the resources. For example, we actually referring to the main hour, um, main labor hours. Okay, labor hours for example. For example, with less capital, but we can produce more. For example, with less time, we can produce more. So this is actually where you need to know how to acquire uh, the efficient, I mean how to efficiently manage the resources. So successful entrepreneurs are good at locating and acquiring resources they need and start uh, and build their firms. They need capital, people, intellectual and physical assets to launch and grow their business. 
So through this chapter, we're going to focus on the acquisition and management of resources. Lah. Okay, so another successful definition of entrepreneurship is the pursuit of opportunity without regard to resources currently controlled. So that's actually, for example, when you run a business, definitely you face some kind of limited resources. So as being entrepreneur, so that means being entrepreneurial, so what you need to do, how you try to overcome those kind of limitation. So that's the reason why if you're trying to remember the framework of business model canvas before, kalau you tengok business model canvas, dia ada dekat situ, actually kalau business model canvas tu, the, what we call it, the left side of the business model canvas ada tiga kotak. There are three boxes on the left side of business model canvas, which is key activities, key resources, and key partners. So having said that, normally for us to understand what would be the resources that we need, first of all, you need to come up with the key activities. So that's the reason why, contohnya, any kind of thing that you want to do, you should understand what are the main activities that you need to conduct. Okay? As simple as when you want to bake a cake. Okay? So you make a, this kind of process flow. You can uh, bake, you can uh, what we call it, you can uh, uh, mix, you can uh, blend, you can uh, bakar dan sebagainya. So all these kind of processes basically Uh, sorry, activities re uh, require resources. For example, kalau you nak bake, contohnya, you perlukan oven. So, that's actually referring to the machine. And to operate the oven, definitely you need main power. Okay? And then you need to set the time. For example, what basically the material that you need. So, having said that, kalau you tengok dekat B BMC tu, is actually showing the key operations of a business. First, you need to understand the key activities. From the key activities that you have been outlined, okay, for you to run a business, so it's going to, it's going to uh, guide you what basically resources that you need. Baru lah you pergi pada key resources. And in running the business, definitely, you, you won't actually have everything. So that's the reason why the key partners come into picture. Any kind of things, any kind of activities, any kind of resources that you actually face limitation. So barulah you actually, uh, apa namanya? Uh, dia, 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 sorry, ada message interruption. Okay, barulah you basically uh, decide, okay, what kind of collaboration that you need from the key partners. For example, most probably you actually have limitation to distribute the product. Okay, ataupun you nak orang kata market the product. So, what you need to have is actually partnering with the partners. Contohnya, you lantik agent, you lantik business partner to distribute your product. Uh, so, that's actually the, the main process ni lah. Okay, so if you look here, the credibility cycle. Um, credibility cycle basically refer to all this kind of uh, stakeholders plus what other thing that you need. Okay, to increase your credibility in running the business. And if you look here, definitely... For you to develop this kind of credibility for your business, you must act, uh, engage with this kind of, you must concern with this kind of aspect. The physical asset, you need to have that, the talent of people, okay, and then you need to build up a reputation with the customers, and then uh, it's going to impact sources of financial capital, and then suppliers, sources of capabilities. Okay, but I don't want to actually elaborate this more. At least you should know for for a, for an organization to develop this kind of capabilities, what they need to have or poses. Okay, okay. So another aspect perhaps that could increase in uh, which is, is part of the company resources is actually source of legitimacy. Okay, if you look here, it's actually divided or categorized into six aspects. Okay, regulatory, legal action, accreditation or credential. Uh, for example, if you want to operate a restaurant, definitely like in Malaysia, people are concerned in terms of GNP, for example. Okay, you want to have some kind of accreditation. What is GMP? If you want to run manufacturing company, so definitely GMP is one of the requirements. Apa GMP tu contohnya? Anyone? Apa, what is GMP? Guys? Hello? Do you know what is GMP stand about? If you want Good to... Good manufacturing practice. 
Ah, pandainya. Okay, that's good. Okay. GMP, for example, we're talking in terms of accreditation. ISO, for example, certain company that are looking in terms of getting the ISO. Okay. Uh, ISO, depending on the nature. For example, if you want to apply, I think the latest ISO is 2020, yang latest one, dia dah keluar dengan dia punya guideline. It's about documentation and uh, compliance kalau ISO ni. So, those company yang comply, dia akan dapat this kind of accreditation lah. So, dia boleh dia boleh gunakan basically like some kind of, um, sebab because they want to be up legitimacy. So, they're going to say that the company is ISO certified for example. Okay. And maybe at certain industry, especially in tech-based industry, there are beberapa accreditation based on their credential juga. For example, like, kalau if you run uh, this kind of uh, IT-based company, okay, or digital economy, okay, normally, uh, MDAC can uh, accredited them through MSC status, Multimedia Super Corridor. Uh, tu adalah, kalau dia punya company ada MSC status, so that means they are very good, they meet certain criteria in terms of sale, in terms of product, in terms of network, so on and so forth lah. Okay, sama juga in the biotech company, dia ada dia punya bio nexus status company. So that means the company comply, okay, ataupun basically, achieve some kind of standard, barulah dia dapat this kind of accreditation. Okay? Okay, the next part is social. Fair treatment, endorsement, network and image. Uh, for big company, for example, they also want to get this kind of uh, to be acknowledged as a company that focus on the welfare of the community, for example. Okay, contohnya macam Starbucks ataupun many coffee company lah. Macam uh, gourmet coffee restaurant, contohnya or cafe, dia akan pastikan dia kata kopi dia ni adalah fair treatment uh, coming from fair treatment punya kopi fair kopi fair trade kopi for example maksudnya dia tidak menindas farmers dia okay they make sure the farmers of kopi kopi uh, farmers tu maksudnya yang yang that, that that basically coming from among the villagers is actually fairly treated uh, that's actually an uh, example lah industry industry should be attractive respected industry known and understood business model Okay, I think this is actually depending on which industry you are currently operating. And then talent, okay. So talent are uh, known and respected people. That means you are hiring good people uh, in operating the business. It's also increase the legitimacy of your company. Uh, and then the next part, location. Within an industry cluster, good location and visible. Anyone could actually... Uh, give me an idea what the meaning of industry cluster. Anyone? Apa maksud industry cluster ni and how location basically could increase the legitimacy of a company uh, image? Hello? Anyone? What do you, could you actually relate? Apa maksud dia kat, dekat sini? Saya nak panggil siapa eh? Ah, saya nak panggil... Sekejap. Uh, I want to call open Luf. Tia. Lufti ke Lufti ni? Lufti Yasir. Kena lupa dah muka awak macam mana. Sorry. Lufti Yasir. Ah yes. Technology Park. Okay tak apa Faiz. Nanti saya nak tunggu, saya nak tunggu jawapan Lufti Yasir ni. Lufti. Lufti Yasir. Hello? Siapa, betul ke? Uh, am I pronouncing the right name Luftia ke Lufti? Lufti. So, uh, uh, Lufti is there. Okay. Uh, housekeeping everyone, open the camera. Panggil tak ada nama ni, you kat mana? Okay, Christopher, hi. Oh, dah tukar image. Mana image uh, uh, Akmal? Akmal sudah tukar dah image dia. Oh, saya tak buka kamera eh. I'm so sorry. Kenapa tak ada remind saya? Okay, Lufti. Uh, Fazli. Mana Lufti? Chicken Diana. Sabah Masani. Nafal. Open the camera. Ruiwe, where are you going Ruiwe? Ni mana besok nak KP nak keluar pergi mana ni? 
Dr. Uma, I'm going back to UTM right now. Oh, why? Why are you going back to UTM? For final exam purposes. Huh? Final exam? You have final exam already? Lufti? Eh, Lufti. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Since my connection is not Stay good. Also, okay. I your... Yes, yes, your connection is not good. I couldn't hear you well. <laughs> understood? Ah, okay, uh, understood. Yeah. So, so, with regard to the final exam, for those people like Marie Wei, uh, basically, if you have problem, please communicate with the faculty. Uh, at least, I think I have mentioned about this, right? If you have problem, so make sure you communicate with the faculty. At least, they will try to accommodate you with some solution for example you can sit the exam at uh, the nearest campus nearest campus any kind of campus uh, at the public university yang lain-lain ni kenapa tak buka uh, Alisa Izwanis Atika Wanteh Danita where are you kita baru 20 minutes start takkan dah you dah pergi tidur balik you tidur balik eh sebab hujan eh I know, I, 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 saya pun pernah jadi student tapi saya tak pernah jadi student zaman-zaman COVID ni lah. Zaman yang kena, zaman yang buka uh, apa kelas start, you join and then you tidur. Betul kan? Ada yang macam gitu. Sebab saya tengok dekat Twitter, uh, macam gitulah student-student zaman sekarang ni. Betul ke tak? Sama, do you understand what I'm trying to say? So this is actually a trend. You you, you join the class and you, you, you join and then after that you tidur balik. You sleep again. Ah, oh, come on. Yang tak ada ni, reveal yourself. Nanti saya nak tahu kenapa you tak ada. Okay. Uh, macam Atikah Wante, Yuman, where are you? Lutfi, saya panggil 3-4 kali nama awak. You are not here. And Wan Nazihah is not here. Mana Iqbal? Iqbal tak ada eh? Iqbal ada kan dalam kelas ni? Saya ingat saya Iqbal. Mana dia? Mesej dalam grup, mana Iqbal? Okay, tak apalah. Yang tak ada ni, uh, yang ada terima kasih jajak saya nak ambil gambar. As a bukti, lepas ni saya nak... Saya nak uh, ni. Ping dah, dah, dah disconnected. One, one, two, three. Okay, we continue. Uh, tadi kat mana? Okay, we continue. Thank you very much. You can off your camera right now. Okay, location like be mentioned and shared by Faiz is like uh, Technology Park. Okay, that, that means you are located at certain cluster area. And certain, uh, for example, certain industry is actually based on the cluster. Okay. Uh, for example, if you're running a business based on IT based or digital economy, so for you to build up the reputation, maybe you will operate in Cyberjaya. Okay, because Cyberjaya is the cluster for tech hub, especially for IT. Okay, so that's the reason why many company in IT based business in Malaysia basically located in Cyberjaya. Similarly, Cluster is not actually new things, okay? For example, like in the US, when you actually saying that you're coming from Silicon Valley, so people would know that, oh, you have a very good business because many tech-based company located in Silicon Valley, okay? So that's actually an example there, okay? And then, uh, like in India, uh, it's saying that your business located in Bangalore, okay? Uh, so basically, they know that you're coming from a good business. Bangalore is actually IT hub. Okay, so sama juga. For example, another aspect like in Malaysia, the government also designated certain area like in Penang. Anyone of you from Penang? So Penang is the hub for medical device. Okay, so if you go to Penang, especially in the area of Bayan Lepas near to the airport, you can see a lot of uh, medical. Um, or pharmaceutical company. Ha, dia buat macam itulah. Okay. And then, uh, it's not only that, certain um, industrial area is actually designated by the government and if you're running a business in that particular area, you can apply for tax exemption. Okay. Like in Iskandar Malaysia before, they have certain, uh, what we call it, certain uh, industry they want to focus on. So, for example, kita ada medical hub, kita ada, for example, in Skandar, Malaysia, they also have education hub. So, that means they try to attract uh, certain company to come to Malaysia and they get basically 
basically tax exemption. And you must remember, corporate tax exemption is quite high, not only in Malaysia, but it's actually applied um, in overseas as well. For example, if you run a business in Australia, okay, your tax is actually somewhere between 30 to 40 percent. That basically in Australia. Okay, if you run a business in Malaysia, you tahu tak berapa corporate tax? Okay, do you know? Uh, nanti kalau you know about business, and then if you actually reach certain amount of sales, so basically you need to pay tax. Okay, uh, business tax or corporate tax. Do you know how much? Uh, Basically, the corporate tax rate, you tahu tak berapa? Anyone can guess, berapa corporate tax rate basically, uh, orang kata, impose to Malaysian business? Do you know? Anyone, cuba guess, berapa you kena bayar? Tulis jawapan dekat chat kalau you tak tahu. Tulis jawapan dekat chat, saya nak nak tengok je. Boleh tak? Okay, uh, Hazel kata 20%, Faiz kata 30%. Lagi-lagi-lagi-lagi, make guess 10%. Lagi-lagi-lagi. Nanti kawan T. So, basically, the corporate tax in Malaysia is about 24%. Dulu 27, 26, dia teruskan 24%. Banyak tak banyak? Banyak, that mean a quarter of your profit will go to pay tax to the government. Okay. Uh, so having said that, if you actually exempted the tax from being paid by the company, it's a lot for the business. So that's the reason why banyak yang actually uh, try, this is one of the way, uh, kalau dekat Malaysia, an agency that responsible to attract investors to come to Malaysia, basically MIDA, Malaysian uh, Malaysia Investment Development Authority, MIDA, boleh google eh, MIDA. Uh, so, one of the things yang dia, dia akan fokus basically based on the tech-based company pun ada juga. Okay, you go to MIDA, dia ada uh, Promotion uh, Investment Activities Act. Dia memang ada certain uh, industry yang being focused. Uh, tolong tengok dekat situ because you kena faham uh, even tech-based pun technology sector memang dapat tech assumption. Okay, but currently, uh, definitely kita memang cuba attract but currently we are facing um, uh, kita panggil ni sebagai foreign investment lah. Kita try to attract but currently, definitely Malaysia is actually losing. Um, saya, saya nantilah kalau saya boleh, uh, what we call it, I'm, I can share with you uh, one of the things yang, it's not article, it's like cartoon. Sekarang ni, banyak uh, big company, they relocate to one of the emerging country in South Asia. You rasa dia pergi mana? You rasa banyak company sekarang pergi ke negara mana dalam Southeast Asia? Anyone can guess? Even Malaysia are losing the book because many company they actually relocate to this country. Um, and this year kita memang losing. Uh, yes. Well, thank you, Christopher. It's not actually Thai. Uh, it's not Vietnam. Basically, Indonesia. Okay. So many company, big company currently relocate to Indonesia. Definitely due to the emerging number of uh, skilled workers and then you have more uh, what we call it potential. Okay. Hyundai pun pindah ke uh, Indonesia. Yes. I think so. Yes. Very true. Uh, Arfan. So we are losing basically. We are losing because previously Hyundai, 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 Basically, dia dekat, uh, dekat Malaysia lah. Sekarang dia relocate. And then, banyak yang, uh, bukan setakat ya, basically banyak yang sekarang ni, 2020, the most gaining uh, country, basically Indonesia. Okay, sebelum ni Vietnam. Malaysia is losing. For the past few years, kita losing. Okay, back in 1970s, dia ada buat satu kajian. Saya ada tengok. Saya tak ingat siapa dia share. Nanti saya akan tengok balik. Dia buat, dia buat perbandingan Malaysia, Vietnam and Indonesia. Okay, sekarang ni Indonesia basically booming. Okay, in term of the foreign investment. Uh, let me share with you. Saya, saya boleh teringat, saya tengok dekat mana. So, one of the professor dekat Ahibs yang show this kind of analysis. Kejap ya, saya cuba cari dia punya uh, analysis. Uh, yes, ada. Okay, foreign direct investment which is they, they make a comparison uh, between Malaysia dengan Indonesia. Eh, eh, Malaysia, Indonesia and Vietnam. Uh, let me share with you the punya gambar supaya you tahu sekarang ni um, the potential, uh, the threat lah. For, for Malaysia is a threat but for Indonesia is like a potential. Kejap ya, saya share dekat WhatsApp. Uh, wait a moment, mana awak punya group tadi? 3063. 
Uh, so at least you you know about the situation lah. Okay. So so this is actually by IMF. You boleh check the card WhatsApp. Saya dah sudah send. Boleh saya teringat this kind of analysis. Okay. Dia boleh. You boleh tengok dekat situ. Okay. So kalau kalau dia punya analysis dia menunjukkan daripada tahun 1970. Okay, 1970 bagaimana naik dan turunnya FDI, Foreign Direct Investment. Okay, Foreign Direct Investment that mean we are focusing on uh, inward investment. Inward ni maksudnya orang datang ke negara kita, inject money. So that mean they operate the business there. Okay, kalau you lihat dekat situ, Indonesia is booming very well. Okay, uh, kalau kalau Malaysia ni naik turun, naik turun dan sekarang turun teruk. Okay, you boleh tengok, boleh, uh, can you check your WhatsApp right now everyone? Okay, boleh nampak WhatsApp dah check belum? Uh, so that's actually showing to you how important this kind of thing because a cluster is not only tech assumption. Having this kind of cluster also referring to the access to the skill workers. Okay, so that's the reason why uh, some company they relocated because they can simply get affordable skill workers, not cheap lah. We are not focusing on cheap labor anymore. We want to have affordable skill workers. Okay. I believe uh, last time, saya ada, uh, saya, saya, saya sebut teringat, ada satu company saya pergi. I went to Jakarta before. I went to this kind of uh, manufacturing plant. Uh, I couldn't remember. Honda ke Toyota. Tapi dia actually uh, supplier untuk Honda and Toyota. Nanti uh, saya, saya tak terremember because I went to Indonesia back in 2015 and then uh, saya tengok macam mana they try to hiring this kind of local people and then uh, macam mana they develop this kind of skill lah. Nanti kita akan cuba lihat. Okay, so and last but not least is about IP. Uh, so I believe that saya dah suruh awak cuba tengok my IPO, my po. Okay, because um, the most direct one basically pattern copyright senang je sebenarnya. Uh, copyright kalau even you you punya thesis is copyright, even kalau you ada satu idea is copyright. But you must remember guys, uh, kalau you copyright sekarang ni, because you basically the student of UTM. Even if you pattern uh, the 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 IP is not belongs to you directly. The IP would be belong to the university, even though you actually will be named as the inventor. Uh, you must remember that. Okay, okay. So we go next. Uh, so principle of persuasion. I think I don't want to discuss this any uh in detail. I just want you to actually understand when you want to actually persuade people. Uh, so this is some of the element liking, reciprocity, social proof, consistency, authority, and scarcity. Okay, because you want to persuade people to be engaged with your offering. Saya tak nak discuss banyak. At least you should understand that this the persuasion of uh, to, uh among the people uh, the persuasions uh skill. That means uh to what extent you manage to persuade people to engage with the offering of the company is very crucial. Okay, for example, how many people like it? Recip uh, reciprocity. Okay, social proof. That's why kalau company ni pun macam mana dia nak persuade pun dia mesti ada this kind of uh quality contohnya consistency dia kena ada buat CSR all of that is actually part of the persuasion punya activities okay i think benda ni kita dah discuss in dari tak just now cluster criteria for location selection uh, saya dah cakap tadi availability, availability of potential employees and consultant okay availability of complemented firm uh, road and airplane transportation dan ni contoh-contohnya lah cost of doing business okay contohnya one of the thing that very Uh, yeah, very uh, interesting to be discussed is uh, okay, to be discussed basically uh, with regard to uh, Johor and Singapore. Okay, okay. Johor ni apa uniknya Johor berbanding negeri lain? Anyone? When we talk about location, apa uniknya Johor? Okay, I just want to ask with you because, uh, yeah lah, you pun pernah duduk Johor sebulan dua tahun kan? Those are not from Johor. Yes, it's near to Singapore. So, apa best ni near to Singapore ni sebenarnya? Johor is quite unique. When we talk about the state, Johor is very unique. Kenapa? Anyone? Okay, near to Singapore. So, why? Kenapa dia jadi unique dekat situ? Can we discuss about this? Singapore will come Malaysia to buy stuff. Okay, we're talking in term of industry. Yes, that's definitely true. Okay, kalau you tengok in term of this kind of thing, uh, that's the reason why you don't actually surprise tau sebenarnya. Banyak juga, macam mana eh, uh, orang Singapore basically banyak, okay, yang pertama sekali when we talk about business. 
And then you you won't be surprised dekat Johor basically one of the good business uh, adalah education. Okay, sebab itu recently kalau you perasan saya tak tahu macam mana dia affected tapi uh, banyak dekat Johor ada private school and the private school basically not attended by Malaysian is not mainly attended by Singaporean. Okay, because for example Uh, you tahu tak sebenarnya satu semester, satu tahun, satu tahun you belajar dekat uh, private school, okay, umpama you bayar satu, so you punya empat tahun pengajian. Do you know that? You, you faham tak maksud saya? Satu tahun you belajar dekat sekolah international, umpama, okay, you menanggung you punya pengajian. Yes, sebab sekolah international, Paling murah kalau you survey, paling murah sekolah international standard bukan Al-Hidayah lah maksudnya international school. American Raffles uh, kalau you check, uh, Marlboro College, okay. Dia ada international school dekat Malik, dekat Johor. Satu bulan orang bayar lebih kurang dua ke empat ribu ringgit. Satu bulan, okay. Satu bulan. So that means setahun mereka bayar lebih kurang tiga puluh enam ke empat puluh lapan ribu. Okay. Tiga puluh enam ke empat puluh lapan ribu. Okay. Diorang bukan kaya-kaya biasa. Diorang memang ada duit. Okay. So that's actually the gap. When they, yes, it's, it's 220. It's about kayangan-kayangan punya group sebenar-benarnya. Okay. So that's why you, you, you lah, we, you, you actually should be appreciate for example. Uh, sebab itu, contohnya kalau you belajar dekat Reading University. Reading University, the cost for one year basically, sebab itu, Uh, uh, macam mana ni, eh? ramai juga Reading tak ramai, tapi student dia tak berapa ramai Cuma dia boleh sustain because of the, the fees very high Sama juga dengan sekolah international Okay, uh, sekolah international Fees dia macam sesuai setahun boleh tanggung Contohnya kalau dah RM40,000 You pun belajar contohnya You bayar berapa? Uh, sebab itu, uh, that's actually from, so I'm sorry to highlight this kind of things Okay, for example Nurul Iza, as a local student You actually need to pay about not more than 2000 ringgit okey per semester am i right correct me if i'm wrong you kena bayar berapa 2000 betul tak nurul iza you belajar dekat utm satu semester you just need to pay around 2000 ringgit if i'm not mistaken correct me if i'm wrong okey but ah uh, tengok sikit je iqbal alhamdulillah iqbal dah ma- iqbal dah masuk eh iqbal okey tapi kalau international student christopher how much do you pay christopher Christopher, Christopher. Around, uh, around 6,000 including uh, uh, Okay, kalau Malaysia macam lebih kurang 2,000 lah. So basically you bayar 6,000 ringgit satu semester. Okay, uh, but for the local student is about 2,000 lah including the, the, the accommodation. More or less, tiga kali ganda. Okay, but itu you international student, you bayangkan RM12,000. Tetapi, uh, you punya RM12,000 tu umpama you belajar dekat sekolah international in Johor setengah tahun. You faham eh? Uh, so, I just want to show with you this kind of uh, scenario lah. So, Johor is quite unique in terms of that. That's why living in Johor, particularly in Johor Baru, is bit expensive. Okay, dia lebih kurang sama dengan KL sebenarnya because of many Singaporean comes here, purchasing power is quite high, not among the local because many of Singaporean sebenarnya duduk dekat Malaysia juga. Okay, tak, it's not actually weird because uh, cuma sekarang ni mereka terpaksa travel balik lah simply because of PKP. Okay, uh, restriction movement order. Okay, so all of this showing to you how uh, The, the the location is very important. Okay, even if you want to run this kind of industry juga. Sama juga dekat Johor, the unique part when we talk about industry, one of them we actually focusing on logistic which is uh, port. We have port contohnya. Kita ada, uh, kalau you tengok, dekat Kelang, dah hanya satu port je, port Kelang. Dekat Johor, kita ada PTP, Pelabuhan Tanjung Pelepas and we have another one port which is uh, Johor Port. We have two ports in Johor alone. Okay. And our port definitely we want to compete with Singapore port basically. So, so that's one of the things lah why uh, location sometimes play an important part. Okay, next um, is cluster. It's geographic concentration of interconnected companies in a particular field. Cluster can include companies, supplier, trade association, financial institution, universities, and active field or industry. 
Contoh cluster yang I want to actually elaborate here is not about the company existence. Cluster is about how you make like a city and you support one another. For example, in Silicon Valley. In Silicon Valley, they not only have this kind of companies, IT-based companies, they also have another kind of businesses as well. They also have another uh, financial institution, especially venture capitalists, okay? So the angel investor will be located around that area and more importantly, like universities, like in Silicon Valley, they have uh, Stanford University, which is one of the best universities in the world, top five in the world, okay? Similarly, in Malaysia, we try to replicate, uh, kita try to replicate Silicon Valley punya model lah. So this is Cyber Jaya. If you go or you, if you visit to Cyber Jaya, apa universiti ada dekat sana, Cyber Jaya? Guys? Universiti apa yang yang very prominent in Cyber Jaya? You pernah pergi tak Cyber Jaya? So, apa universiti yang prominent ada dekat situ? Uh, Lim Kok Wing, yes. Um, basically, yang paling prominent adalah MMU, Multimedia University. Yes, okay. Thank you, Atika. So, MMU, Multimedia University Lim Kok Wing, boleh lah. Tapi, MMU basically very prominent. Ah, Contoh, that's the reason why they connected um, the business with the industry. As simple as uh, in animation, okay? Multimedia keluarkan talent. And then, talent tu, dia keluarkan lah the business. Contohnya, macam, uh, apa namanya, Animosta. Okay, Animosta yang boy-boy cartoon, basically, uh, daripada situ lah, okay. Let's go for hiring this kind of multimedia university student and when the, um, and based on the experience, they form a new business lah, which is the, the form Bobo Boy, itu uh, contoh dia, okay. Okay, so characteristic for innovation in a cluster setting. So, if you want to make this kind of cluster, what basically the thing that you need to have, ini uh, contoh dia. So, high quality human resource. You know about cluster too, it's not about the business. That means access to University. Sama juga kita, contohnya, kalau kita tengok UTM, sebenarnya kita, diorang ada, uh, ada satu teknologi park sebelah UTM. You boleh nampak sebenarnya, if you, I think from your college, you boleh nampak pun. That means kalau you duduk dekat college perdana, college sembilan, you boleh nampak uh, sebelah kita tu sebenarnya ada teknologi park. Betul kan? Okay. And dekat teknologi park tu sebenarnya ada company like Flex. Uh, there are few company lah. Flex memang dia fokus banyak. Dia punya company tu, uh, I flex kalau kita tahu, flex, saya rasa saya ingat satu, satu company. So basically, dia banyak hiring our students sebenar-benarnya. Okay, even kalau you rasa you nak buat internship pun, uh, memang dekat situ lah paling dekat. Okay, and then research in local universities, availability of investment capital, like I said to you, like angel investor, uh, or venture capitalist, they should be located around that area, representative customers, rules of law, sufficient infrastructure, when we talk about infrastructure, that's why um, kalau you tengok dekat um, area cyber jaya, it takes time for them to actually build up this kind of cluster. Because bila contohnya, dia panggil orang putih, they actually uh, call the westerners to invest in cyber jaya. But definitely, orang putih, they have this kind of, of what we call it, lifestyle. They, they, they love to hang out during Friday night. They, they love to go to club, for example. Okay, but dekat Sabahaya tak ada apa dekat situ. So, that's the reason why kalau tengok dekat Sabahaya is very multicultural. If you go there, you not only meet uh, many of foreigners, tapi banyak African, Arab, uh, Westerners basically living in Cyber Jaya right now. Okay, and that's acceptance of globalization. Okay, successful role model, uh, moderate regulation and taxes. Uh, that's why dekat cluster ni, uh, contohnya, they actually try to give tax assumption but uh, that adalah requirement yang bukannya sepanjang the operation normally the government through MIDA going to give tax assumption up to 10, uh, 5 years and can be reapply up to 10 years maximum. Okay, and then competitor consultant. Uh, even you you yang operate in the management field pun definitely if possible you relocate your business around that area. Okay, sebab dia bukan satu ni contoh uh, contohnya macam Johor eh, kita nak buat the industry of uh, rapid, you know, rapid petroleum refinery punya integrated plant. Okay, if uh, uh, that's actually the biggest in Malaysia right now, memang dah dah, dah happening and booming in Pengerang uh, area in Kuala Tinggi. So basically, 
the benefit is not to the directly to the community but also to the business operation. Sekarang ni kalau dulu-dulu lah area pengerang, area pengerang eh, area bandar penawar, uh, even the price of uh, the the price of the house normally tak sampai pun dua ratus ribu, satu ribu lebih. But because of that project is booming, so tourism naik, for example. And one of the thing yang kita akan tengok adalah insurance. Kalau you buat this kind of company, contohnya you buat apa namanya yang saya cakap di petroleum refinery punya facilities definitely semua orang tu semua kena ada insurance. Okay, everything. Because uh, this industry is uh, prone to disaster. Dia memang sangat risky. Okay, meletup contohnya. It's happened dah, happened dah pun. Okay, uh, ada yang meletup dan sebagainya. It will impact the business, it will impact the uh life uh, or the welfare of the uh, employees uh, so one of the booming industry dekat situ adalah insurance company sebenarnya okay okay so e-commerce saya rasa saya tak cerita banyak you tahu what is e-commerce all about that mean digitally enable commercial transaction between and among relation and individuals okay uh, so this about value chain i want i don't want to discuss more but i i believe that part of acquiring resources because you want to have this kind of value change. Okay, even though you're not operating all this kind of value chain in operating the business, but at least you should hold this some kind, you should actually have access to this kind of resource. For example, macam Apple, saya cakap tadi lah. Okay, maybe kalau tengok technology development, dia buat product design, dia buat. But when it come to logistic manufacturing, dia outsource. Contohnya, dia outsource ataupun dia actually try to answer with the vendors. Okay. Uh, they do not need to produce by themselves and then marketing ah uh, contoh macam apple product again they not market market themselves uh, uh, they they not doing going to conduct the market by themselves okay but they they start to have this kind of collaboration at least they have access to marketing aspect contoh dekat, dekat kalau dekat malaysia you want to buy apple product you need to go to switch machine apa lagi ict imac saya ingat uh, so there are few uh, Vendors yang menjadi dia punya registered distributor lah. Okay, sell distribution and service and lastly, last but not least, barulah you sampai kepada customers. Okay, okay, so uh, I'm, I'm going to discuss about, this is very important aspect when we discuss about uh, resources. Okay, question for selecting value chain activities that will be carried out by the new firm. Sekali tengok dekat sini, value rarity and immutability is we focusing on the theory of resource-based view. Okay, there is satu theory which is the resource-based view mentioning that if you possess a resource whereby the resources that you possess basically valuable, okay, rare, uh, uh, non-substitutability and inimitability that may can be imitated. So that means you can gain competitive advantage. That's actually based on the theory. So for you to gain this kind of uh, competitive advantage, which is part of your mission, you must make sure that uh, this is actually the, the area lah. Must make sure the resources that you possess is rare. Orang lain tak ada. Okay, as simple as you recruiting uh, top of the cream punya scientist, for example, and it's very rare. Uh, Inimitability, tak boleh di imitate, okay, ataupun kalau nak imitate, it's very costly. And then non-substitutability, ada lagi satu sebenarnya, bukan sangat tiga, ada lagi satu, which is cannot be substituted with any kind of product. Barulah you actually can gain competitive advantage, okay. And then we go next, virtual organization. I think a virtual organization, that mean you can simply run the business uh, as long as you're connected to the internet. I think this is more or less... Uh, how you run the business virtually through the connection of internet. I think kita pernah cakap dulu pasal digital nomad or perhaps uh, you can actually simply do any kind of thing even though without, okay, a, a, a physical office. Okay, so the seven characteristics of new basic technology, I don't want to elaborate this more. I believe when you learn about uh, technology management punya principle ni lah dia, okay, when, when, how we going to make sure that the technology that being proposed or developed by the company is something that impactful or valuable. Uh, we're going to see this aspect, functional performance. Acquisition cost, ease of use, that means this kind of technology is easier for the people to use, operating cost, uh, and then reliability, need for service and useful, sorry, uh, useful lifetime. Uh, serviability, time and cost to restore a failed device to service. That means uh, we, we're also talking in terms of how you run the backup, okay, if anything happen, okay, and how you make sure that you, you the technology that you 
uh, offer to the customers basically you have this kind of after sale for your service and then compatibility fit with other devices within the system uh, so I, I don't want to elaborate more but I believe you should know and uh, or understand about the basic technology or the characteristic of basic technology that you should offer to the respected customers and then uh, this will be the last slide for today uh, we're going to discuss about effective new ventures use their persuasion skill and credibility to secure the required resources for the firm in order to build a well-coordinated mix of outsource and internal function. Okay, so again, when we talk about resources, it's not about resources that you have, but at the same time, to what extent you manage to persuade the people and build up your credibility in running the business. Because nowadays, it's not about product offering only but also to what extent you have this kind of image for example some people they actually reluctant to buy oppo rather than apple sebab apa maybe they fikir sorry yes for those yang choosing oppo maybe maybe uh, they fikir oh they nak pergi kepada uh, apple product simply because of the brand uh, you kena faham ada setengah orang because they want to see the credibility even for example maybe oppo ataupun xiaomi contoh dia jual uh, Poco phone ke apa nama dia Poco phone eh Pogo eh Pogo phone ke apa which is the the quality is good but because of the branding is not so really uh, credible so that's the reason why many customers are also opted for uh, to buy the credible punya uh, what we call it uh, product okay so I think that's all for today uh, any question kita saya ingat nak cover satu dan dua, uh, dua tapi satu pun cukup lah hari ni at least you should understand about this uh, and then next uh, not next week tomorrow we're going to discuss about operation management chapter 14 any question guys any question tomorrow pukul berapa kelas pukul 11 ok so I'm going to meet you again on tomorrow so tomorrow nanti kita saya akan cover sikit je pasal operation and after that we're going to discuss about the progress again of your business because kita lebih ada lebih kurang sekarang ni kalau tak silap saya kita dah minggu yang keberapa 13 eh eh minggu ke 13 kalau tak silap saya we have another two or two more weeks betul sekarang minggu berapa anyone saya pun dah lost last counting 13 ah 13 betul so we have another two more weeks betul Yes. To complete. Ah, tak apalah. Saya rasa um, tak. Okay. What I actually dah yang deliver ni sebenarnya more or less dah almost cover sebenarnya you punya uh, apa namanya you punya ni. Cuma nanti saya nak bagi satu case tadi yang kena buat dalam masa seminggu. Besok baru saya bagi. Okay. So untuk you punya final exam uh, remind saya minggu yang uh, you punya exam bila 22. Confirm kan 22? Yes. Confirm. Yes, confirm 22. So, uh, by 15 of January, saya akan bagi satu case study untuk you punya final exam. Sebenarnya final exam you tak susah. Uh, doctor. Yes. Uh, doctor, can you uh, give the information in English actually? I don't understand Malay. Oh, okay. Your final exam will be held on the 22nd of January. For your final exam, I'm going to give you not a long lah, not really long. A case study. It's about 12 pages, case study. So you need to read that case study, try to understand, try to internalize what is happening in the case study. And then on the final exam, you need to answer the case study whereby um, I would say 30% of your mark will be based on the case study. 30% of the overall mark. Okay? You faham tak maksud saya? That means you need to understand that case study very well. Because it's going to contribute 30% of the mark. The question looks simple, but I really need you to be critical in order to show the maturity of you as the third year student. That means giving example, make more elaboration is very important when you answer the question. It's not just copy and paste from the case. You need to elaborate. Faham eh? And maybe you can also give example. Try to relate. Uh, contohnya, uh, uh, maybe you can relate with the current policy of the government, you can relate with any kind of what we call it uh, rules and regulation with regard to certain industry. Saya rasa nanti bila saya bagi case study tu, you tahu industry apa. Definitely you would know what will be the industry. So you can cepat-cepat cari uh, what we call it uh, any kind of rules and regulation from that particular industry. 
Uh, and then the case study, saya rasa even though it's actually taken from Harvard Business School case study, uh, but I believe bila saya baca pun English dia tak susah pun. Normally, uh, dia, dia punya level tu just easy to medium uh, English only. You don't have to worry lah. Okay, saya pernah baca case study kalau dia tulis benda tu uh, advanced level, memang English dia memang is, you kena buka kamus lah. Okay, so I think that's all for today. Um, so Doktor uh, nak tanya sekejap. Boleh. Doktor. Ya, yeah, ya. Yeah. Okay, regarding how a good assignment kan, yang apps tu memang kena masuk dalam Play Store atau App Store ke? Eh tak, saya tak kata kena pun. Tak. 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 Yeah. Dia, no, I think I have mentioned you tak perlukan, you tak perlu letak pun. Kalau nak letak, up to you. It's not actually a requirement. But, uh, sebab kalau nak letak dekat App Store for example, uh, you kena bayar status lebih. Tak perlu, tak perlu, tak perlu, tak perlu. You tahu kan? If you want to publish your app on the App Store, you can uh, sorry Play Store, which is on Android, you can buy it. Even if you want to masuk Play Store, pun you can buy it lagi mahal. And then since you are actually not doing your own coding, contohnya you guna Mobile Key, you guna Marvel, you tak ada buat coding sangat pun, which is you drag and drop. So normally you tak boleh masuk Play Store, okay? Eh, app Store. Uh, app Store basically sebab tu you tengok kebanyakan apps, dia banyak ada dekat Android berbanding dengan Apple. Apple, they're very particular in terms of dia punya programming code, dia punya apps tu. Okay? So, but, but at least gini lah. You tak perlu publish. But at least uh, what you need what, what you need to know, just make a future plan. If you want to publish, what will be the next action? That means on your report, you need to highlight what will be your future, uh, what we call it, or timeline. Okay? Okay, at least you should know the process. Ah, uh, Saya nak auto process dia. Kalau you want to register dekat App Store or Play Store especially, App Store susah, Play Store, apa dia punya resource dia? Cuba cari. Dia ada API, API punya untuk vendor tu. Cuba cari. Boleh eh? It's not a need but at least you know the process. At least you know. And then you you should know bila you publish, siapa dia punya owner, copyright of that kind of apps. Because when you publish an app, so that actually fall under the protection of copyright. Okay, so who going who's going to uh, own the copyright for the app? Saya nak awak tahu the process. At least you learn from doing it. You faham eh maksud saya? Siapa tadi? Atika Wanti, faham tak? Okay, so I think uh, ada soalan lain? Tepat okay, jam I want to get the slide uh, chapter 13 and 14. Ah, okay. Thank you very much. Remind saya, saya akan masukkan. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Uh, so, for those who are still not signed in the attendance, please do so. For those who have uh, dah, 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 dah signed ni, uh, boleh uh, leave the session. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a nice day. I'm going to meet you again tomorrow. Okay. Thank uh. Thank you, Rota. No, please have a nice day, everyone. Ah. Thank you. Okay. You mind? Yes, no worries, please.